so welcome. Yes, this is our, our workshop. So why are, why are we doing this? You know, what, what, what are, our, are our interests? So the overarching goal, I think why most people are here, you know, we, we are astrobiologists, many of us, or, or if you're not an astrobiologist, welcome to, to the club of, of many of us who are astrobiologists. Um, you know, this is a question that we've all been interested in is where, what is the distribution of life in the universe? That's the fundamental question of astrobiology. And, and much of astrobiology focuses on, uh, you know, micro, microorganisms, microbial life, uh, maybe macroscopic life in some contexts. Um, but really many of us, you know, grew up watching Star Trek where our interest in astrobiology maybe stemmed from, from science fiction, or maybe it didn't. And maybe you went a more conventional route, but, but I think all of us at this meeting started to realize that, that there's really not that much of a difference in terms of, of, of the, the continuum of life uh, between, you know, simple life and more complex life. And then what we have that we call technology now, it's different, it's weird, but it's all part of the same spectrum in a sense. And so if we're going to think about looking for life, we ask, well, what kind of life can we look for? And, and life that uses technology, I think, I hope we would all agree here, is a valid form of of life to search for. And so why study technosignatures? Because we're, we've already been studying biosignatures. We've already been, already been studying extreme life on Earth. We've been studying uh, the future of life on Earth, uh, how we might look for life on exoplanets. And so technosignatures is really the, the, the missing piece, not that it's been totally ignored, but it, it's, it's a, maybe been underemphasized to some extent compared to some of the science of, of biosignatures. Um, now, why non-radio technosignatures? This question certainly came up as we were organizing the workshop. Uh, the short answer is this was in the NASA exobiology uh, proposal call. They, they specifically were interested in advancing the science of non-radio technosignatures. And so that's, that's just what we have to do. Now, now what's really exciting is that uh, the idea of studying technosignatures or any sort of SETI has not really been part of NASA's research portfolio for, for quite a while. And so these recent exobiology calls that have invited research to study technosignatures, um, it, it represents a, a bit of a shift in, in terms of the, 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 the science politics and, and, and what, what NASA is really interested in. Um, and, and partly this actually came from, uh, from the House Science Committee uh, where they, they actually charged NASA with, with allocating some resources to study technosignatures. So there's, there's interest beyond just astrobiologists. Congress and, and probably many people in the general public are, are really interested in this question. So, but I think, you know, more generally, you know, why non-radio technosignatures? I, 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 if you know me, I'm, I'm interested in all SETI, all wavelengths, radio, non-radio. But, um, you know, SETI, the idea of, of, of looking for technology elsewhere. It really came out of, of radio astronomy, which was really the first real experiment that, that scientists could conceive of to try and, and detect some sort of interstellar signal that might come from, from an, another technological civilization. And so, you know, that's, that's a, a great start to, to an entire field. And, and if it weren't for that, we wouldn't be here today. Um, so the idea of non-radio technosignatures, it's actually reflective of the change in technology that we have now. We're now in the era of exoplanets, which we really couldn't conceive of detecting in the 1960s and 1970s as, as SETI started to unfold. And uh, you know, today we, we can, we've detected thousands of exoplanets. We've started characterizing some of them. We're pushing the detection limits on, on Earth-sized planets, smaller and smaller, uh, pushing toward that, that, that holy grail of an earth twin where you've got, you know, maybe a really strong biosignature. And so what then, like there, there's, are, are there techno signatures that would be detectable on earth? Are there techno signatures that a future earth or an alternate earth or some weird habitable planet might have? Um, and, and so, so the idea of focusing on, on non-radio techno signatures is really exploring this untapped space where we've, we've only recently entered into the era of being able to think about really characterizing uh, exoplanets, characterizing their atmospheres using spectroscopy, characterizing the whole planet, planetary system uh, in, in infrared or other wavelengths. So this is really a chance to explore um, a lot of topics that maybe were, were unexplored previously or not really even technologically feasible. Uh, so why hold this workshop? Well, I think, you know, NASA is interested in this. I think this is a critical time for technosignature science. And so this is a great opportunity. Let's get as many people that, that are interested and have something to contribute. Let's, let's, let's have a discussion. We really want this to be very discussion focused, not just a show and tell series of talks. Um, 
and we really hope that there'll be something that comes out of this workshop that can help advance the science of techno signatures. Uh, so you can go to the next slide, please, Ryan. I don't have too many slides here. Uh, so just logistics, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we have a keynote talk every day to kick things off. We'll have six short talks. Uh, there's a break between the keynote after just the keynote, two talks, and there's a break. We have four more talks um, after that. We're only going to allocate a few minutes after each talk for clarifying questions. Um, but then after all the talks are finished, there's going to be a period of an hour and 15 minutes, hour and a half, where we'll have in-depth questions, uh, discussion. And, and really the goal is to, to not make this just, you know, rapid fire Q&A after a speaker goes and then move on, but really to try to make this an integrative discussion where we pay attention to what everyone's saying. You know, we tried to group the, the speakers roughly into to themes that make sense. Um, but, you know, the, the, the hour discussion is really a chance for us to, to, to get into some real conversation that might not be possible in another format. Uh, so next slide, please. So we asked uh, many of you to submit posters. Uh, if your poster hasn't appeared yet on the website, it, it should later. There were some technical difficulties. Uh, but posters are available all week. We're going to have brief lightning talks Thursday morning by poster presenters. And if, you're, if you've got a poster, we'll send a, you know, another email with a little more detail about that. You can view posters all week through the website. There's the posters Slack channel. Uh, feel free to promote your poster on Slack. You can send a post a link. You can talk a little bit about it. There's no shame in in uh, you know promoting to get people to see it. And then um, you know we we have a, a, the the Slack upgraded Slack account, and so we can actually have one on one and group video within Slack. And so we'll provide some more details for how to do that if you want to actually have a brief video chat with the poster presenter. Uh, all right, and then the next slide. I can go, yep. And then Slack, I think I've seen a lot of chatter on Slack. This is really great. Uh, it's, it's um, you know, it's difficult to have this meeting not in person when we first thought of this, you know, the idea of this meeting, it was to get all of us in a room in some remote location so we could talk face to face. That's not happening anytime soon. So in lieu of that, you know, Slack is, is a nice way to, to keep in touch. Uh, it's, it's great that a lot of you signed on in advance to start feeling comfortable with it. So, you know, this takes the place of coffee and tea breaks and, and other ways that we might informally bump into each other. So please use Slack, ask questions, post resources, post papers. I see a bunch of you created new Slack channels already. That's awesome. So make new channels to get discussions that you're interested uh, uh, happening. So, so this is really, you know, your workshop. We want you to bring any ideas that you have, anything that you want to get feedback on, please, please use Slack to, for that. And I think there's just one more content slide. If you go to the next slide, Ryan. Oh. Workshop delivery. Oh yeah, there we go, perfect. Um, so the purpose of the workshop, the main purpose, you know, the main purpose is to, to build this community. We want to have conversations. We want everybody here to, to be able to speak, to get to know each other. And, you know, the Slack channel, the Slack workspace will be kept maintained for at least two years after the workshop. So that is the main goal, build this community. But, but secondarily, you know, we want to actually come up with a deliverable out of this. And so we have a very discussion heavy week. Uh, we want to actually produce a research agenda. Um, and this could take a lot of forms. It's, 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 it's really going to be our discussion that guides what this looks like. But I think it would be really uh, useful to have a workshop report that lays out some of the really important objectives and needs for techno signature science and, and, and published in a way that would be accessible to the broader astronomy community and, and uh, community of interdisciplinary scholars as well, not just astronomers. So we have time on Thursday and Friday. Uh, there's, there's no talks other than the, the poster sessions on Thursday, uh, but we have, we have group discussions, we have breakout sessions. Uh, the breakout groups will be determined based on our conversations Monday through Wednesday. And so again, that's gonna be based on everything that you wanna talk about and what we bring up on Slack. Um, and so after the workshop is over, uh, then we'll take the recordings and all the, everything that's been written and, and we'll develop a, a published report uh, once the workshop is closed. So that is it. I think the last slide is just to thank you. So yeah, have fun. This is a workshop for you. This is, you know, workshop for all of us to, to, to think about things that I think, I think we think this is, you know, this, this, this should be fun. This is searching for technology, but, but, you know, I think it's really neat that we can 
really have these conversations in, in a way that's actually linking it to NASA missions um, and, and to whether they're current missions or future missions. This is actually something that is, is becoming a tractable problem and, and not just Star Trek or sci-fi anymore, but, but, but real science. And so I really look forward to this week of sharing science with you and, and just having new ideas that, that we, we share and, and develop. So thank you again for coming and I'll pass it back to Ravi and, uh, and, and uh, we will get on with our day. So thanks again.